The Uncle Eric Presents podcast is remastering and presenting the old classic crime, suspense, murder mystery radio broadcasts. Grab yourself a drink and some popcorn, turn the lights down low, snuggle back on the sofa, and let your imagination flow while listening to a thrilling classic crime radio episode now. Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saints, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. I'm not home. It's the middle of the night and I'm asleep. I'm in Schenectady, sitting up with a sick aunt. Oh. Hello. Hello. Are you Simon Templer? Well, come in and we'll compare Social Security cards. Thank you. I thought you were in Schenectady. Never heard of the place. Sitting up with a sick aunt. She recovered suddenly. Simon. I need help. Desperately. Why? Because I'm dead. You're what? Dead. Oh, well, of course, some of my best friends... Simon, my name is Francis Blake. Here, read this. Read? That little item down in the corner, under obituaries. Obituaries? Hmm. Hmm. It says here that the body of Francis Blake is at the Restwell Chapel... Burial at noon tomorrow. You see, the newspapers say that I'm dead. Yeah, but I don't know whether to believe them or not. You uh, are Francis Blake? Oh, of course I am. Mm. Come here a moment. All right. Thank you. Now... Simon, what are you... Oh, no! I beg your pardon. You... You pinched me. Yes. But... Well, I had to make sure I wasn't dreaming. But you're supposed to pinch yourself if you think you're dreaming. I know, but this way was more fun. (laughs) Also, I never heard a corpse say ouch before. Therefore, you're not dead. I already knew that. I didn't. Now that that's settled, I think perhaps we ought to go visit. Visit whom? Your corpse. Bright. Never mind, Louis. Oh, Mr. Templer. Had I have known it was you, I wouldn't have bothered with the whims. Had I known it was you, I just wouldn't have bothered. However, Francis... Oh, thank you. Uh, Louis should perhaps be explained. He's a cab driver I try to avoid. I rarely succeed. Which proves to me that my life isn't all that it should be. Keep it clean. And where at this hour of the night are you going? The Restwell Chapel. Get another cab. Louis. Okay, okay. Some sport takes a girl to see a funeral parlor in the middle of the night. I'm merely taking her home. She lives in a funeral parlor? She's dead in a funeral parlor. Who's dead? Miss Blake. Huh? Me. Excuse me, but Louis, I Louis, gotta... don't take I your hands just off gonna... the wheel. I already did. Yes, so? She said, ouch. Personally, I would have liked to find out for myself, but if you say so... I do. I'll take your word for it. Only, how are you going to explain to the funeral parlor how riding around in cabs would you? Simple. I am apparently the kind of a man a girl wouldn't mind being seen dead with. The rest will chapel at your service. Hmm. Uh, Louis. I know. Wait. But I'm telling you one thing, considering the type of company you're keeping, I ain't waiting till nobody plays no hot licks on a trumpet. Well, I don't think you'll have to. Come along, Francis. All right. I, I've been trying to pretend to myself that it's all some kind of a joke, but that 
funeral parlor looks too real. Well, we'll find out soon enough. One nice thing about funeral parlors, they're always open. That you call nice? <laughs> she have a point there. Ooh, listen to that doorbell. Chopin, at least. Ah. Oh. I beg your pardon? I said, ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Come in, Francis. This is an hour that comes to all. Except in states that don't have daylight saving. I, sir, was referring to your bereavement. Uh, whom are you mourning? We would like to look at Francis Blake. The hour is late, but grief knows no clock. Good heavens, an epigram. We try, sir. If you'll follow me. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, here we are. And there she is. Beautiful, isn't she? Very. <gasps> Simon, she does look like me. A little bit, but hardly enough to explain. Uh, how did she get here, Miss Blake? Mm. The uh, police brought her. Oh, I see. Uh, who identified her? Well, that was hardly necessary. Her coat over there in the corner. Simon! Wait a minute, Francis. What about her coat? It had her name on the label. Now I shall withdraw. You'll want to be alone with your grief. All right, but make a sound withdrawing, please. Uh, so we'll know you're withdrawn? Oh, really, sir, it's no use jesting. The dead never laugh. <laughs> well, he's withdrawn. Simon, that's my coat. It is mine, Simon, but, but look. Yes, two holes in the front of it, bullet holes. Bullet holes? The girl here, whoever she is, was was murdered. Come on, we'd better get out. All right, but I'm taking my coat. I don't think... It's mine, not hers. It belongs to me, even though she was murdered in it. Simon, what was that girl doing with my coat? Wearing it when she was shot, presumably. But There's I... another question, perhaps a more important one. Why was she shot in the first place? I suppose she had enemies. Have you? Back again? Yeah, we're back again. Francis. Oh, thank you. The little lady lost her place? Uh, Francis, where do you live? The Thornton Towers. Louis. I heard. Simon, back there. Why did you ask if I had any enemies? The coat's a distinctive one. Well, it's a very colorful plaid. Yes, the girl back at the funeral parlor was murdered while wearing it. The question comes to, was her wearing the coat when she was killed merely a coincidence? Or was she killed because her murderer thought she was, um, you? Here you are, Louie, and... Uh... I know. Don't wait. On account of your sitting up with a dead friend. <laughs> Good night, Louie. Good night. Good night, folks. Oh, Simon, it's so good to be back home. My apartment's down the corridor. Simon, I feel terrible. Oh, you needn't. But what you said in the cab... She was wearing my coat, a very distinctive one. And then she was shot to death. That girl is dead because of me. No, we don't really know that. Well, it must be so. Somebody thought she was me and killed her. Mm, that's possible. But then that means that somebody wants to kill me. Uh, is this your door? Hmm? Oh, yes. Of course, it's also possible that someone didn't like the coat. And, uh, hey, did you leave your lights on when you left? No. There's a light in the room ahead. Well, that's the living room. You stay here in the hall. I'll go ahead and see who it is. But I... I just want to make sure they're neutral on the subject of plaid coats. Or you. Shh. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello. Ah, how she was beautiful. Your wife. My what? Your wife. It's her picture on the desk there, no? Well, that does seem to be a picture of Francis. And your name, she is... Uh, my name's Simon. Ah, it is a name that fills herself with the soul, no? 
No. I... I knew that tonight, of all nights, you would be lonely. Believe me, I'm so not lonely. I... I am here. Oh, your wife, she must have been a wonderful woman. She, uh... Your life with her was the magnificent symphony, no? Mm, chamber music would probably be more accurate if you... And want... now that she is, alas, gone, I am here. Without even a pause for station identification... Look, who are you? I am Olga. Simon, I... Wa who is she? Olga. Who is she? Francis. And now that you two have met... Waiting I... a moment, huh? Aha. Uh -huh. I look on the picture. I look on the flash. The what? The flash. Of which I might adding. Your wife is perhaps carrying a little too much here and there. Especially there. Now, just a minute. You mustn't point out her bad manners. But I am seeing your wife. She's not bad. She isn't. That is, Francis isn't. If you like, you could try pinching her. I never pinch, except boys. Oh. Simon, you are disappointing me. Goodbye. Well, that was quite a performance. Personally, I didn't care for her cadenza. Oh, I don't know. It was a nice cadenza, and the tootie was definitely fruity. Mm. <laughs> that is, uh, um, uh, Francis, the whole thing was camouflaged. For what? Take a look at the room. The room? Oh! Yes, it looks as if a junior hurricane had visited it. You mean somebody of Olga searched the room? Uh-huh. This one, and, uh... Yeah, the bedroom as well. But, Simon, what was she looking for? I don't know. Whatever it was, she didn't find it. Our entrance stopped her search. Well, I'd better start straightening things up a bit. It's a good idea. I'll help you. Well, shouldn't you be going home? Oh, I don't think so. You may get some more visitors later on and rougher ones than I'll go. Why? Well, maybe they'll tell us if we ask them prettily. In the meanwhile... Yes, Simon? We can practice the overture to that symphony Olga mentioned. <laughs> Yes. It's getting awfully late. Yes, I know. Well, you really can't sit up all night waiting for someone to come. We don't even know for sure that someone will. Olga got into this apartment, and someone else did before her. Someone else? Of course. Your coat was stolen, wasn't it? Well, I suppose, but not from the apartment side. Not from... Well, where was it stolen from? Well, I can't be sure, of course, but I gave that coat to the cleaning shop down the block about a week ago. Cleaning shop? Mm-hmm. What's the name of it? The car to clean is. Why? Because evidently it started out from there to wind up on a murdered girl's body. Therefore, come on. We're going to... Yes, believe it or not, I'm taking you to the cleaners. I thought I told you not to wait. This is a free country? Yes, There's a but... parking limit in this here cave, maybe? No, but... I waited. But we're only going down the block a little bit. You can't afford a quarter? I like to walk. Uh, what do you get from walk? Exercise. Uh-huh, and from exercise, an enlarged heart. From an enlarged heart, you know how many people each year drop dead? Add them up. We're walking. Come on, Francis. Simon, you're worried. Moderately, about all those people with enlarged hearts. <laughs> uh, this is the place, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, front door is shut, but there's a light inside. Let's try. It's locked. However... I think someone's coming. Recognize him? Yes. Yes, that's Mr. Maxson, the manager. Oh, what do you want? Uh, do you mind if we come in? Look, it may have escaped your attention, but it happens to be after 2 o'clock in the morning. Why do you want to come in? The rain. It's not raining. But suppose it starts I here. happen to be a very tired man. You should go home early. I shouldn't be bothered by drunks. I'm not drunk. We've stopped by for Miss Blake's coat. Coat? The plaid. As I may have mentioned before, we are not open for business. And then what are you doing here? I'm crazy about carbon tetrachloride fumes. I'd still like the coat. Oh, then please do stop by in the morning. Simon, why did you... I wanted to find out if the cleaning store knew the plaid coat was gone. But we didn't find out, did we? No, nevertheless, we've worried Mr. Maxson. Thank heaven Louie's handy. Hey, Louie! Louie! 
<laughs> you give up, huh? Yeah. Into the cab, Francis. All right. Well, name your destination, Mr. Templer. A very long trip. Yeah? Drive to the back of the cleaning store. You'll probably have to go around the block. That alley must lead there. Okay. But, Simon, why are we going to the back of the store? Because we're going in? No, because I suspect Mr. Maxim is going out. All this here is maybe none of my business. It isn't. Oh, you know, a remark like that could easily hurt a fellow's feelings. I'm sorry. No, it didn't hurt mine. I'm sorry, still. But... You're not spending this PM in the way a PM should be spent. Nonsense. So far, it's all been good, clean fun. That's what I mean. Simon, Mr. Maxson hasn't come out of the store yet. No. He may be coy, however. But why should he have anything to do with anything? He shouldn't, but it's very possible that he has. <gasps> Simon! Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Maxson is shutting up shop. Coming down the back alley, which confirms something or other. You mean if he weren't hiding something, he wouldn't use the back way? Perhaps. We're far enough away from the alley for him not to notice. Look, he's turning the corner. Louis. I am alert. Not for nothing was I a Boy Scout. Although, actually, what I was a Boy Scout for was a certain Girl Scout. Hold it a minute. He's getting into that bucket. He's a villain. That's a convertible. Everybody knows. Only villains ride around in convertibles. He started. Louis. Here we go. And stopping. Yeah, I better stop right here, huh? Uh huh. Simon, he's going into that nightclub. Interesting place for a store manager to finish his evening's work. Let's go, Francis. Uh, leave me know how the floor show is. I'll be sure to. Hmm. Barker's bandbox. I've heard of the club. Yeah, and I've heard of Barker. Nothing complimentary either. Well, here it is, and in we go. <laughs> Dark, crowded, and needs ventilation. The floor show? <laughs> Emphasis on show. Simon, Mr. Maxson's over there. Yeah, ducking out of the door near the piano. Let's follow in his shifty footsteps, huh? Gee, I, I hope nobody notices. With what's going on, or rather coming off, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, it's so dark in this hallway. Yeah, listen. I can't hear what they're saying. Can we get a little closer? Now, wait a minute, Barker. I'm not going to be waiting long enough. Where are the stones? I told you, the girl disappeared. I know what you told me. Don't give me the stones. Now, suppose you tell me where the stones are. I, I, I don't know where they are. Stones. Yeah, Barker's Look, got quite a reputation as a crook of various kinds. Stones are jewelry and unquestionably stolen jewelry. I Having fun, fellas? Oh. Huh? Hope I didn't frighten you, lady. Coming up behind you, two nosy people like this. <laughs> that was her asthma. Yeah. This here's a rod. How, uh, how cute. Could I see it? Uh, let go. Simon, I've got his gun. Yeah, and I've got a fist. Let's see what happens. Uh, how gratifying. I hit him and he fell down. Jake? Come on. All that could happen to us in here... Jake! ...would be fatal. Fired at us. I, yeah, I know. It's always a little nervous making. Well, here we are. Thanks, Simon. No, not yet. I'm going in with you. But... No, for safety. Oh. You. You think maybe. I'm just not taking any chances. Well, Foyer is all right. Living room. Francis. What? Don't look across the room. Olga's back, but this time she's staying. What do you mean? <gasps> I hope oh. you wouldn't see her. She isn't beautiful anymore. Oh, no. Just dead. Hmm. I'd better phone the police. Wait, Simon. You know this thing started with Francis Blake being dead. But it wasn't Francis Blake. It was another girl. And then someone else got killed. Olga. Still not Francis Blake. But, Simon, the next time, do you... Do you think maybe it will be? <laughs> Good night, Sample. Uh, good night, 
right, Lieutenant. Thanks for dropping over. And exit Alga, exit police. Francis. Yes, Simon. You better go to bed. I'll stay on. It's almost morning anyway. Oh, I couldn't sleep. Would you like me to uh, fix us some breakfast? Oh, well, say, that's not a bad idea if you feel up to it. Oh, I don't know how I feel. You stay right where you are. Won't take me more than a few minutes. All right. Okay, that's all the sound you're going to make, sister. The gun's loaded. If you've got ideas about yelling for help, remember this. Bullets get to you quicker than help. Now, let's get out of here. By the service door, like I come in. But, Simon... Now, the I... boyfriend, you write him a letter from where you're going. If you're lucky, sister. And I hope you're lucky. You're too pretty to enjoy dying so quick. <laughs> Francis, what are you cooking, steak? <laughs> Francis, I don't intend to oversee your cooking, but... Francis. Francis. Oh, here she is, Mr. Barker. Yeah, nice work, Jack. Hi, I want to know what this is all about. Yeah, I bet you do. You and me both, baby. What'd you do with the stones? The stones? Yeah, yeah, the chorus girl's delight, the old man's charm, the stones. Oh, you mean jewels. I don't have any. Maybe not on you, but you're going to tell us where they are, won't you, baby? Suppose I don't know. I wouldn't care to believe that. Well, you, you'd better start because I don't know. All right. I'll start not believing you. Jake. Yeah? I don't believe her. I don't think she's behaving right. You don't, huh? I don't. Ah, okay, Mr. Barker. What? What are you going to do? I'll slap you around a bit. It's going to hurt you more than it hurts me, too. Oh, no, you you can't. Want to bet? Hold it, hold it a minute, Jake. I'll get it. Yeah? Barker? Who are you? Simon Templer. You've got Francis Blake there, haven't you? It's your phone, Joe. You must have. Listen, if you don't hurt her in any way, I'll get you the stones you're looking for. She doesn't know where they are. Matter of fact, where are the stones? The Carter Cleaner's shop. Look, don't hand me that. We've already been through the joint. But you didn't know where to look. Yeah? That yeah, could be a deal. Okay. But your girlfriend will be under a gun all the time. First funny move and she gets it. No funny moves. We'll be seeing you. Okay, Jake, we're going visiting. Maybe we'll trade in a babe for the stones. If the stones are handed over. If they ain't, we'll just trade her in. Good morning and... Oh, you were here last night. That's right, Mr. Maxson. I was looking for a plaid coat. Plan? Yes, maybe it would be here on this rack. Oh, it wouldn't be there. You see, this rack is for dresses. And this is for last night. Oh. Sorry to have upset you, Mr. Maxson, but company's coming and I've got to set the table for them. Joint looks clean. No blue uniforms are on. Park it, Jake. Okay. Here we go, baby. Uh, I can walk by myself. Yeah, I know, I know, but I enjoy your company. Simon! Hello, Francis. You, Temple? That's right. Simon, I... Hey, stay next to me, sister. I better just lock the door so we won't be interrupted. All right, where are the stones? Yeah, they're in the place here. They must be. I don't like the sound of that. It could be a stall. Uh, 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 What's that? And Mr. Maxson, he fell down while he was pressing some suits or something. Yeah? Get up, Maxson. Come on. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Barker. Hello, rat. Oh, you you don't have to talk that way, Mr. Barker. I can't help it if the stones were stolen from me, if the woman double-crossed me. This babe here? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you work her over, Mr. Barker, and, and her boyfriend? After all, they're the ones who killed Olga, aren't they? It was in their apartment. Never mind, Olga. I like the kid. I sent her out the job. She got us. Business, you got to cut your losses when you have to. I still want the stones. Hey, you. 
They are here. They have to be. Then find them. I've looked, but they're hidden cleverly. You sound like a guy up a tree, mister, and in just a couple of seconds, I'm going to cut that tree down. A tree? You wait a minute. Tree? Suppose you wanted to hide a tree so you couldn't find it. Where would you hide it? I ain't interested in hiding trees. You'd hide it in a forest, of course. Therefore, going through the place I noticed... Francis, go through that dress rack. Dress rack? Now find a dress, any dress that doesn't seem to belong. Well, all right. Hey, I don't get it, boss. Who wants to hide a tree? Get up, Jason. Maybe it's that simple. Oh, Simon, uh, I'm not sure what you mean, but this shop is in a pretty expensive neighborhood. All the dresses here are very good ones, except this one. It's quite cheap, covered with cheap rhinestones. Let me have it. Yes, of course, it doesn't belong here. Why is it here? Because it's a forest. Looks like a rag to me, not like a forest. Then suppose you take another look at some of the rhinestones. Let me have it. Hey, yeah. Most of the things sewn on that dress are cheap rhinestones, but among them... Are the genuine stones. The ones we've been looking for. Well, nice work, Max. I, 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 I didn't know anything about it. Somebody else must have done it. The frame here... No, did... no kidding. Wait a minute, Parker. Wait, wait. I, I, I... For what? I'm going to tell you something, Max. No, Parker, I... You sure told him. Never did like a double crosser. Hey, where are you going? Well, it occurred to me you mightn't like witnesses either. Oh, oh. Francis, stay behind me. Hey, what are you... Pressing machine build up quite a lot of steam pressure. I kicked the outlet pipe off, and it's aimed at you. You better strap, Parker, unless you want to get carboiled. Why are you? Oh, it's getting too hot in here. Come on. Let's go. You're leaving us? Oh, they've gone. Yes, Francis, but not for long. And the police won't have much trouble picking them up with them all... <laughs> forgive me, but I can't resist this. <laughs> with them all steamed up. Simon, I'm terribly grateful, but I can't resist... Francis. ...asking you what it was all about. Oh... Oh, an intellectual, huh? <laughs> well, you see, Francis, Maxon and Barker were partners in the jewelry business. Illegitimate. Oh. Uh, they worked out a nice idea. They'd use very distinctive clothes left with a cleaning shop as disguises for themselves and their confederates. Oh, and disguises which couldn't be traced because they'd lead back only to perfectly innocent people who had alibis and everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And the last job they did involved a girl who wore your plaid coat while stealing the jewels. Oh. Maxon, however, decided he wanted all the jewels for himself, so he killed the girl and hid the stones. And Olga? He had to kill Olga because she suspected something wrong and came to this apartment because that's where the plaid coat came from. Mm -hmm. Well, but how did you know that Maxon had killed her? Back in the shop, he said Olga had been killed in this apartment. How did he know that? Because he'd killed her. Oh, Simon, what would I have done without you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> The question is, what are you going to do with me? You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, our cast tonight included Shirley Mitchell, Viola Vaughn, Larry Dobkin, Lou Merrill... Tony Barrett, and Jack Moyles. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. I hope you enjoyed this latest Uncle Eric Presents episode. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode. Please check back often and make sure to subscribe to my podcast so you won't miss the new exciting episodes. In the meantime, scroll up or down to find other exciting episodes to listen to. Don't forget to visit UncleEric.com to see and listen to all the program categories and episodes. There are also hundreds of the old classic crime and detective television show episodes you can watch as well. They're a hoot to watch. That's Uncle UncleEric.com. If you like this episode, please consider buying Uncle Eric a cup of coffee at the support link below. Thanks a million. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>